My name is Kale Heiser. The problem that I examined this year was the discussing of controversial topics on unsuitable platforms, that is social media. The most important thing that I learned during this journey is that one of the root causes to this problem is the desire for self-exposure. Instead of seeking to give glory to God in what is said, many social media users seek glory for themselves by posting or saying things that will gain the approval from large audiences. Something I hope everyone can learn from this is that the true purpose of social media is to connect and engage with others, and that the discussion of certain topics belong in a more formal setting. Hi, my name is Jezra Reynolds, and the problem that I studied this year for practicum was women inequality in sports. Throughout this year of research, I learned that there is a $2,384 pay gap between MBA and WNBA athletes. This shows that the biggest issue with the inequality is the difference in pay gap between the two genders. I also learned that oftentimes the media attention for both genders is not the same. I chose this topic because I personally have experienced mistreatment from being a female athlete throughout high school. Oftentimes at a younger age, female athletes give up on the sport that they love because of the fact of seeing the pay and media attention they may receive as they get older. My goal is to talk to and motivate all young female athletes to continue to play the sport that they love. I believe that God in his creation did not have a distortion of inequality amongst the sports world. Having more athletes supporting female athletes will slowly show progression with this issue, and I believe a change can happen. Hi, my name is Mandy Brown. The problem I have researched for my practicum is how harboring negative emotions can affect your health. The most important thing I have learned is that negative emotions are not our enemy and we should not suppress them. In actuality, negative emotions are an incredibly helpful and powerful guide given to us from God that can lead us to the root cause of the problem if accompanied by God's wisdom. God wants to begin a process of healing the most sacred place where he himself resides, our hearts. I have come to believe that certain negative emotions reveal certain things about the state of our heart. The most important thing we can do is open our hearts to God and bring our negative emotions to him. We need to ask him to reveal to us where an emotion is stemming from and to help guide us into the healing of our hearts and minds so that we can embrace the true joy and freedom that he has created us for. Hello, my name is Evan Hollick and for my senior practicum, I researched how a cancer diagnosis can completely change a family's life and how we as a community can rally around that family and help them. So I know from personal experience and from stories of others, when someone in your family or close friends gets diagnosed with cancer, it will completely change your life forever. And what we can do as a community to support and help these families is instead of you know, asking questions about it and trying to be too invasive when you think you can be helpful, really be respectful to them and keep your distance from them and let them deal with it in their own way. But at the same time, we need to be supportive to them and be there if, we need, if they need us. Hi, my name is Madison Ingreo, and for my practicum project, I chose to research how the various changes a patient can experience while undergoing chemotherapy treatment can lead to a distortion in their sense of self-worth and identity. I chose to research this topic after my mom was diagnosed with cancer in 2014, which ultimately claimed her life in May of 2018. After completing this project, I now understand more in depth how these changes were affecting her psychologically. After visiting with medical professionals and conducting research, I understand that there are many changes to both the cognitive processes and the appearances of patients undergoing chemotherapy treatment. However, the most important thing I have taken away from my practicum project is nothing that I could have learned in the hospital, is that no one with cancer wants to be treated differently than anybody else. They do not want to constantly be reminded of the obvious changes in their lives with people going overboard with gifts and special treatments. Although we should be there to offer our support to those battling this disease, it is more important for us to help them in their desires and efforts to lead as normal of a life as possible. Hello everyone, my name is Cameron Jackson. For my senior practicum project this year, I researched childhood obesity. The root cause of childhood obesity is the lack of resources in which parents have to provide for their children. These lack of resources make it challenging for parents to provide nutritious meals, consistent meals, and daily exercise routines. 
After conducting my service project, I learned that many children who are overweight suffer from low self-esteem. The low self-esteem comes from bullying or possibly not having someone by their side to motivate them. In order to put an end to childhood obesity, parents, teachers, doctors, and the community must motivate children to live out healthy lifestyles. By doing so, the children will have role models to follow in their journey of living a healthy lifestyle. For my role in ending childhood obesity, I conducted a healthy eating and physical exercise lesson with elementary school students. The students made a pledge to talk to their parents about cooking healthy meals and exercising on a daily basis. I will follow up with the students next year. Hi, my name is Ryan Shaw, and this year in practicum I studied how the internet affects our real life relationships. One thing that I learned is that while it may be helpful in maintaining some relationships, it's still necessary to take time off your phone to actually communicate with people in your life. It may be helpful to use it in this times where we have to stay home, but it's still important that you have family time to make sure that you maintain and build upon already set relationships. Hello, my name is Ethan Leonovich. For my practicum project, I researched the enduring conflicts in the Middle East and the underlying factors that keep the flames of war bright in the region. As belligerent as Islam may appear, and as repressive and authoritarian the governments of the Middle East may be, they are merely secondary factors of the current conflicts. Rather, it is the lack of hope for a better future that truly prevents the region from seeing peace. Young people are the bringers of social change in every society, and is the young men in every society to go off and fight and die, when this vulnerable and substantial group, making up approximately 50% of the region's population, have no hope for employment, no hope for social promotion. They lash out in anger and look for those things by any means necessary. It is the radical Islamic cleric and the violent authoritarian who promises these things and provides the only perceivable hope in this troubled region. If there is to be any hope for a lasting peace in the Middle East, there must be a better source of hope, one that leads to stability and peace, not war and genocide. Bombing campaigns and soldiers in the streets only brings more violence. To end the conflicts, we need Middle Eastern stability, not the controlled chaos of our own Western democracy. We need to recognize the fact that we can't bluntly apply our own Western ideals of law and order to this tenuous region. Our arrogance to believe that the West has the solutions to every Middle Eastern problem has only dug the graves of millions and has wasted our own wealth and the lives of tens of thousands of our own young people. If we ever want to see peace, we have to see the problem for what it is, one of hope. Hi, my name is Jessica McBride, and the problem that I have identified is that society has distorted what beauty really is and has created a false standard that many have begun to feel they need to live up to in order to be considered beautiful. People have been greatly influenced by television, advertisements, and especially social media. This problem has caused many to have a low self-esteem and lack self-worth, therefore feeling the need to change and alter their own appearance. I have learned that if we believe that we are truly beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God, then there is no outside source that could ever change our view on ourselves. Beauty is often portrayed as outward, but is better understood as who we are and not what we look like. My desire is for others to stop comparing themselves to what images they see and to start embracing themselves for who God created them to be. So girl, embrace those stretch marks, embrace your kinky curls, embrace your beautiful face, because just because you don't fit into society's standard of beauty doesn't mean you aren't beautiful. Hi, my name is Amachi Okege, and for this year's practicum, I am my topic on pressures on high school students and how it affects their psychosocial development. Psychosocial development is a comprehensive psychoanalytic theory that identifies eight stages that a healthy developing individual must pass through from infancy to late adulthood. The current stage of adolescence are in our ages 12 to 18, which is a stage that is identity and role confusion. This is a very crucial time in adolescence life because this is where mental, physical, and emotional changes are the most drastic. This can be a very stressful time for adolescents, and throughout my year of research, I've learned that in order for an individual to pass from this stage to the next stage in life successfully, we must identify the current problems within our education system and alter them in a way that's beneficial to our students. Parents must involve themselves in their students' lives in a healthy way, and we must also evaluate the mental health and social lives of our students. Hello, my name is Aaron Ball, and my practicum topic is about the negative influence of teenage dating relationships. The most important thing that I've learned from my topic is that dating can be super beneficial if the parents allow their teenagers to date in a safe and beneficial way. What I want people to know is that they don't need to treat dating as a premature thing to do for their kids. They need to pay close attention on that, but still leave some personal spaces to their children. My name is Ashlyn Carlisle, and this year for practicum, 
I researched the increase of foster children due to the distortion of relationships caused by neglect. In my research, I discovered that there are six main categories of neglect. Physical, medical, educational, environmental, emotional, and supervisual. However, the top three reasons for children to enter the system are emotional, environmental, and physical. I want people to learn the different types of neglect and the signs that go along with them. Because if you are aware of the indicators of neglect, you can help save a child's life. Hi, my name is Tyler Hammond, and this year for practicum, I decided to research about the lack of funding and awareness in a heart and lung bypass machine called an ECMO machine. The biggest thing that I found while researching is this there's a lack of effort put forward by hospitals and ECMO organizations to provide the general public with information about the ECMO machine. This causes the ECMO machine not to receive the research money it requires to improve on many imperfections and after effects it leaves with patients. Hi, my name is Mariah Hansen, and for my practicum project this year, I chose to study how industrialization of the meat and dairy industry have negatively impacted the growing divide between creation and humanity. Throughout this entire experience, I have learned that the main source of conflict surrounding this issue is ignorance. Many people who support animal cruelty and don't support animal rights are simply not aware of how much animals are truly suffering. In conclusion, I want to challenge each and every one of you to research the companies you buy from and consider making a more ethical decision when it comes to the meat and dairy that you consume. I know that even though we can't end suffering completely in this world, we still can take many steps to help diminish that. Hi, my name is Malik Hawkins and the problem that I identified for my practicum this year is the unawareness and misjudgment of people with mental illnesses. The most important thing that I learned is the many warnings and symptoms that allow us to point out the people with these mental issues. We come across a lot of people each day unaware of their disabilities and struggles and we immediately start to judge them, viewing them as strange and unusual without even stopping to consider that they have a brain dysfunction that may make them act this way. Some people may be aware of the situation, but they feel the need to make fun of them and talk about them behind their back. So if you ever come across any of these people, instead of alienating them and making them feel worse, include them, make them your friend, and show sympathy. Kindness goes a long way, and I believe it is the best way to spread happiness. My name is Becca Schultz. For my practicum topic, I researched abuse in the horse racing industry. Through my research and experience, I learned that racehorses are often misunderstood, and this misunderstanding leads to abuse in many different ways, both psychologically and physically. I hope that through donations and communication, it is possible to end horse racing abuse because each individual life is a gift given by God and deserves love and respect. Hi, my name is Katherine Tylavsky, and for practicum this year, I studied the decline of genuine Christianity in the church. Our relationship with Jesus is meant to be life-changing. That relationship should cause us to want to become more like him. That process of change and sanctification is often uncomfortable and challenging, and the fear of that uncomfortability and challenge is what causes many believers to live a watered-down faith. It is my hope that we can all seek to live a life with Jesus that holds nothing back, because that is where we will find true fulfillment and joy. Hi, my name is Alexander Van Wee, and the problem I studied this year was poverty in Anne Arundel County. The most important thing I learned from studying this problem was that even though we are one of the top 25 wealthiest counties in all of America, and top three in Maryland, we still face the same problem that every other county faces, which is poverty. Poverty is increasing year after year and currently sits about 6.1% in our county. Something that you and I can do to help combat this problem would be by donating and or spreading awareness. Now, donating just doesn't mean money. It can mean donating your time and energy into local organizations such as Hope For All that help combat this problem. Hope For All is a place where I did my service hours at and I got to experience firsthand at what it was like to see this problem. Hi, this is Emma, and my topic is the relationship between domestic violence and sexual inequality. From this project, the most important thing I learned is the problem is not caused by a single reason. It could have a lot of factors. For example, the domestic violence could be caused by the social bias, traditional thought, or even the mental disease. 
In order to respond to this problem, I suggest all the victims to call the National Domestic Violence Hotline, or even they cannot find it by themselves, other people could call the hotline of the shelter run for them, and they also could call the police. Hi, my name is Jojo, and the problem I have been studying for my senior practicum is school bullying. From my research, I found out the lack of sympathy and respect among teenagers due to the self-centered nature in society cause them to bully others. What I want people to know that we should value diversity and respect each other. Teenagers should understand that everyone is different compared to others. We should accept and respect these differences in a love and kind way instead of isolating and bullying them. Hello everyone, this is Tiger Wang. Unfortunately, I cannot give you a short answer of what my practical problem will be because there are actually two that are linked to each other. First, I thought the misuse of science by atheists is a problem because science is meant to draw us and God closer but atheists are using it in the opposite way. However, when I started to understand the reason behind it, I saw a larger problem and that is a misperception of science by many theists. You see, for a very long time, many people who believe in God have been using God as the explanation to many many unsolved mysteries. And when those mysteries are solved by science one by one, atheists feel encouraged to use science to disprove God. And that is terrible for theists. Next, the most important thing that I've learned is that now I understand the arguments for both sides are equally compelling. And last, if I am to invite you to take some action, I would say to go out to the world and learn stuff because by doing that, we are becoming closer to God and closer to the truth. Hey y'all, my name is Destiny Sharp and I'm a part of the graduating class of 2020. I took my phone and compared it to a phone from 20 years ago and saw a huge change. But as I was sitting in my classroom and thinking about how it was arranged, how my grades were, tests were, everything was kind of similar to how things were 20 years ago. And that means it was lacking innovation and it wasn't getting better and better like it should. I think the most important thing that I've learned is that I really wanna make a difference in the education system and that everyone should be vocal about the changes they wanna see in their classrooms and in their school in general. My name is Dana Anderson. This year for Senior Practicum, I focused on the topic of history specifically on the broken relationship with our fellow humans due to the lack of connection and even the dismissal of the truth found in history. Through my years work with the Anne Arundel Historical Society, as well as my own studies, the most important thing I have learned is that human nature has not changed. There are many valuable lessons that can be learned from the people of the past that will greatly benefit our modern day relationships. We must remember to keep one eye in the past during our walk to the future to ensure better roads ahead. Hello, my name is Tom Bailey. My senior practicum topic was video game addiction. Over the course of the year, my research question was why do people play video games excessively? And my research revealed three reasons why. First, to escape reality. Second, social inhibition or having trouble forming relationships. Third is to just relax and have fun. Playing video games in moderation is okay. An addiction is defined as a strong inclination of indulging in something repeatedly. However, if you feel that you are addicted to video games, there are places you can get help, such as the American Addiction Center. Hello, my name is Tyler Beck. My senior practicum this year is on vaping and the harmful effects of using these devices. The most important thing that I learned this year is that nicotine is more addictive and dangerous to what we all may know it to be. And since my topic mainly focuses on the underage use of these devices, I would say for teens not to vape. Teens can get more easily addicted to nicotine since their brains are not fully developed yet. And although there is no real solution to my problem, 
Everyone should know that vaping puts all kinds of harmful chemicals and metals into your lungs like vitamin E acetate, which can leave a layer of liquid in your lungs, and metals like nickel, lead, and copper that can all damage and hurt your lung capacity. Everyone should understand that those are in vapes and not everyone does, so I hope this gets the message out. Hi, my name is Sam Belcher and the topic that I have been researching is the exclusion of students with learning disorders. The number one thing that I wish people knew about this issue is that it is not fair to put all the blame on teachers for students not receiving the extra help and support that they need. Rather, I have found that the root cause of this issue is the lack of support that teachers receive within schools due to the arbitrary restrictions set on specialized education, along with the lack of support and cooperation from the families of these students. My name is Grayson Brown, and a problem that I have identified in the world is how an overprotectiveness of self leads to a lack of connection with other people. The idea that when we put up walls to protect ourselves, we sometimes relationally push away the ones around us. The most important thing that I have learned in my research is that the best way to break down the walls that we have created for ourselves and to break down the walls that others have created for themselves is to daily practice being more vulnerable, being more open, and being more honest with those around us. My hope is that those who see others making this kind of push will respond with kindness and gentleness and understanding so that we can all grow closer to the community that God intended us to be. Hello, my name is John Clark and my practicum is on autism and how people with autism are treated differently. Autism is a developmental disability based on two factors, difficulty in social interaction and difficulty in communication. What I learned from my site visit is that the problem does not stem from people with autism and their differences, rather people's expectations. Whether our differences have to do with our ethnicity, our religion, or our gender, we should take the time to embrace ourselves and others' differences as well. By accepting and interacting with people with autism, we would not only bless them, but ourselves as well. Hello, my name is Jordan Carter. The focus for my practicum is the lack of opportunity from, for immigrants from Central America and their native country, and as well as poor treatment of immigrants who come to America to seek a better life. The most important thing I've learned from exploring immigration is that immigrants migrate to America for different reasons. There are limited opportunities for career development, the need to escape gang violence, and the desire to reunite with family members are some of the reasons why immigrants come to America. There are many people across the world that wish they could have the same opportunities as Americans. I would like for other people to recognize that immigrants are seeking a better life and they shouldn't be condemned for that. As Americans, we have a responsibility to help those that need help. In the future, when you see a news story related to immigrants, I ask that you be open-minded and ask yourself, how can I help, instead of, why are they here? Hi, my name is Autumn Case, and this year I researched how PTSD hinders one's ability to build and maintain relationships and found that the three most prevalent reasons for this to be confusion, guilt, and fear. Victims of traumatic events can often feel confused about what they've been through and feel as if no one can understand their situation. They also can take the blame for what they've gone through, even if it was completely out of their control and make them feel unworthy of love and support. Traumatic events also trigger a chemical imbalance in the brain, which makes everyday safe situations feel life-threatening for those with PTSD. So one thing that I would encourage all of us to do is to be kind and patient with everyone because we never know what someone has gone through or has to deal with every day. Hi, my name is Aliyah Capola, and the topic that I researched this year was how unjust punishment towards animal abusers contributes to greater acts of violence. Animal abuse has been shown to be a precursor to further acts of violence. Oftentimes, serial killers admit that they started the abuse of animals before escalating to human victims. One important thing people should know is that animal abuse is linked to domestic violence. 
domestic abusers often start with abusing animals, or if domestic abuse is being committed in a home, most likely their pet is being abused as well. Hi, I'm Anthony, and I decided to do my practicum project on the stigma surrounding ADHD medications. Now, there are three important things that I learned while researching this topic. Number one. 98% of kids that tried medications saw results. Number two, some people think that they don't need the medications anymore, but 60% of those people went back on. Number three, some people use medications as a last resort, but they always wish that they had used them sooner. This is Community. My name is Kyle Cullen, and I did my senior project on the topic of water pollution and how it distorts God's creation. Water pollution is a serious issue and needs to be taken seriously. Here are some stern statistics on how widespread water pollution really is. About 80% of water pollution is caused to domestic sewage ending up in our waterways. You may ask, what is domestic sewage and why is it such a big deal? Well, domestic sewage is produced by a community of people that don't dispose of their sewage properly. Domestic sewage is sewage that comes from you and me and not large corporations. But luckily, thanks to many hardworking organizations, there have been numerous legislations put out to try and help stop the spread of water pollution. Some of the most well-known legislations are the Clean Water Act and the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Repenticide Act. It was put into place to try to help control the amount of runoff that enters our waterways. Both of these have been proven to work and stop the spread of water pollution. The most important thing that I learned throughout this process is that we need to take care of our environment. It was given to us as a gift from God and we can't let it just rot away. And something that others can do in response is to make sure you dispose of your waste properly. You cannot just let it end up in our waterways. Hi, my name is Gabriella Fox, and the topic that I did for my practicum this year was why do youth fall away from Christianity? And the things that I have learned from this topic is that youth tend to fall away because their faith is not rooted in anything solid. The ones that fall away do not have a solid foundation and their Christianity never took root in their own lives. Some leaders that are influencing their youth are not adapting new methods of drawing them into the church and there is no authenticity. What people can do to bring youth back into the faith is to love them where they are, be humble in their approach while they minister to them, and be friends with them so that their hearts can know and experience the love of God. Hello, my name is Nathan D'Angelo, and the topic of my practicum is that ADHD students don't get the proper help they need to succeed in school. And what I learned and what I want people to understand is that these students with ADHD need more than the basic accommodations that they're given to be successful in school. What these students need are teachers that are patient with their students with ADHD. Teachers should also provide a flexible seating option for their students with ADHD and possibly other students. And finally, they should be available for one-on-one -on -one help after their classes. But this is only possible if the student communicates with the teacher for their help. Hello, my name is Jordan Doty, and for my practicum, I researched mental health stigma and how it leads to people not getting the mental health help that they need. What I have learned is that mental health stigma has caused fear inside of people with mental illness that if they speak out about their problems, they will be defined by their mental health issues, which can lead to strained relationships lack of opportunity for those who come out about their issues, and being labeled as unstable and unsafe. What I hope people do in response to this problem is start more conversations about mental health, because stigma starts when there is a lack of clarity and understanding. Start the conversation to normalize talking about mental health. Hi guys, it's Shekana Duncan, and my topic is how society's distorted view affects veterans with PTSD. Society claims that veterans are a safety risk towards their community, which include men, children, and women, because it is believed that when veterans return home, they are dangerous and they can lash out because of the trauma that they experience in war. However, society um, belittles them and cares less about them because of what they've heard about and what they see on the news and in papers about how veterans are dangerous and at risk of hurting others. But what I want society to do and to know is that if God doesn't judge, then who are we to judge his people? And that we should make a welcoming environment for them to come and seek help and to resolve the trauma that they have within themselves.
Hello, my name is Destiny Fatison, and this year for my senior practicum, I researched female genital mutilation, or FGM. A problem that I saw through my research was that there are 200 million girls and women all over the world who are being forced into having their genitals mutilated, and it's leaving them with many physical and mental problems. FGM is, has some deeply rooted misogynistic ideology that is being passed down through generations of women as the passage of right. I would like to debunk and denounce some popular misconceptions about FGM. FGM is not something that just happens in Africa or in the Middle East, and it's not just some cultural or religious practice. It's a human rights violation, and it's not getting a lot of awareness or attention. I would, if you would like to help if you would like to help fight against FDM, consider going and donating to the Desert Organization, Desert Flower Organization, or visiting the endfdm.eu webpage and join the fight to end FDM. My name is Judd Flora. My practicum topic is how an overuse of technology can lead to things like depression in teens and young adults. Through my research and site visits, I learned that depression is much more common than I first thought. And it's very important to build proper relationships with those around us so that you have a community that you can properly rely on in times of need. In my service project, I learned the importance of relaxing oneself as a way to fight off stress, which can lead to depression. Hello, I am Jeremy Grant and I'm a senior from ACS. And for my practicum topic, I've decided to study homelessness in Maryland. One of the most important things I've learned from this topic is that many people, specifically homeless people, are broken from decisions or circumstances from their past and they have turned to substance abuse and crime to ignore their problems and, or run away from them and in the process they have lost their homes and despite their failures they need to know that someone cares for them. I would say that people can respond to this problem by doing something as simple as volunteering at shelters, like distributing clothing and serving bagged lunches. And if that's not something that you're comfortable with doing, you could even make a small care package and put stuff like water and snacks and hygiene items, and then give them to people begging at intersections. I should also mention that people ought to know that homelessness can't be solved in one way. There's so many causes and the main solution isn't just to get every homeless person in a house immediately. The solution process takes time and it's unique to many different people. So it's a matter of figuring out what is best. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Eidelman and this year for my senior practicum project, I chose to research the problem of stereotyping of multiracial friend groups and the people within those friend groups. The biggest thing I think I've learned throughout the course of this year is that this problem stems directly from two things. One, people's inability to accept change and two, their unwillingness to learn about the differences between themselves and other people. The biggest thing I want to see people do in response to this problem, especially at ACS, is for them to reach out to new people who are not exactly like them, whether that be sitting with new people in the lunchroom every day, or reaching out to new people in your classes that you might not know a lot about. Hi, my name is Madison Hudson, and the topic I choose to research for my senior practicum is how the selfishness of pharmaceutical companies has resulted in the opioid crisis. The most important thing that I learned is that addiction has many factors, starting with the responsibility of the pharmaceutical companies to the overprescription from doctors and the consumer's lack of knowledge of what they're being prescribed. The biggest thing that I would say and leave you with is that you should make yourself aware of the things you're being prescribed and spread awareness on the opioid crisis. Hello, my name is Julie Hemmings, and this year for my senior practicum research project, I decided to look into how the misinterpretation of tragedy and the mishandling of grief can lead to strain within families. The root cause that I have identified to this problem is people being in denial of what has happened, pride, and lack of knowledge of how to properly cope with the situation. The most important thing that I learned throughout my research this year was that in order to help people to properly deal with the tragedy and to find a healthy way to grieve, we must reach out to them and try to help them, like Jesus helped others and encourages us to do. I hope that from my practicum project, people will be able to understand the importance of reaching out to people and helping them walk through difficult times, as Jesus continuously does for us. My wish is for people to see and understand the importance of helping one another, as Jesus helps us.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Jalen Humphreys, and today I'll be presenting my practicum on how the media's glamorization of drugs and alcohol influence adolescent substance abuse. Due to the world's current circumstances, I am unable to present my practicum in the traditional manner, but in a more concise format. Social media such as Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram are a phenomenal platform to get to know new people and contact your friends daily. Although it has its pros, the cons outweigh them heavily. Adolescents see their friends smoking or drinking on their stories daily, which leads them into the false understanding that the act is not that bad and leads them to want to try it them themselves, especially now that their best friend is using them. All it takes is to smoke or drink one time for you to become addicted and abuse substances, especially as a developing teen, your brain constantly wants to experiment and try new things. The most important thing I learned is that this problem cannot be solved immediately. But over the course of time, we can decrease the number of adolescents abusing substances by showing the negative side of the usage. I encourage AACS and many other schools to participate in Red Ribbon Week, which is a week based around bringing awareness to adolescent substance abuse through various fun activities and games. This was shown to decrease the number of drugs used on campus and give students a second thought before their next time taking a harmful substance. With hard work as a community and world, we will be able to decrease and minimize the number of adolescents abusing substances. Hello, my name is Beth Knotts. My practicum is on stress-related heart disease and the ways that your stress directly affects your heart's health. In order to find a solution, I investigated therapy animals and the ways in which they help us prevent heart disease. The biggest thing I learned this year was how significant it is to productively manage your stress for your future health. It's very important for us to have an outlet for stress in order to keep our heart healthy. Hello, my name is Makai Marshall, and for my senior practicum, I have researched and identified the problem of teen drug abuse that's going on in the world. The most important thing I realized throughout this whole process is that teens who lose their self-worth or happiness try to fill the void with either drugs or alcohol. And in response to this, we as teens can call each other out if we see each other falling off on the wrong path and on a personal level, we must find our self-worth in the Lord rather than materialistic things. Hi, my name is Courtney Maurer, and my practical topic is medical malpractice in the United States. Medical malpractice is a purposeful or non-purposeful neglect from a healthcare professional to a patient. This can vary from surgical errors to dishonesty with a patient or even leading a patient to believe that they need more treatment than necessary. They can sometimes even be deaf. Through my research, I have discovered that the main issue with medical malpractice is that there's always room for error, meaning doctors mess up just like the rest of us and they are not exempt from the sinful nature just because they have medical training and all the good schooling that we don't have. So the way that we can prevent medical malpractice to the best way possible is to raise awareness. Any one of us can be victims at any time and we all need to know that. We need to raise awareness for each other, for ourselves, for our family, our friends, whoever it might be. We all need to be aware of the fact that we can be victims at any time too. And there are so many people right now who are already victims of it and are suffering every single day. So in order to prevent as much pain and suffering as possible, we need to raise awareness in our everyday lives. Hello, I'm Isaac Miller. And for my practicum project, I chose to study how the comforts of the West undermine the value of Christian evangelism. I wanted to know why people in other parts of the world are being persecuted and martyred for their faith, while people here who claim the same faith see Christianity as only a mere outlet in their consumer-oriented lives. My biggest takeaway from this whole project is realizing that we ought not to hold any improper expectations for anyone, but rather our goal should be to uh, understand better the people around us so it may be easier for us to spread the word. Hello everyone. My name is DJ Mooring. I'm a seer in AACS. The problem that I studied over this year was lack of music programs in public and private schools. What I learned from this is that students are not provided with the opportunity to participate in music pro programs that teach students to read music, play musical instruments, or learn music theory. I also learned that students who attend schools that have had their music programs taken away happen mid-year or at the end of the school year. To better understand this problem, I plan to continue my research and show people that while money can be a big problem in this, maybe there is a way to make music in different ways, such as making fundraisers. Hello, my name is Blessing Openuga, and the topic I chose to study for this year's senior practicum is marine pollution. 
Marine pollution is a combination of chemicals and trash, most of which has come from land sources that have been washed or blown away into the ocean. The most important thing I've learned from my project is that it's not about how to find a way to get rid of all the chemicals and trash, it's about finding the source of where it all comes from and terminating it. I would like people to know that we could all be accounted for to help put a stop to marine pollution and we only have two options, we could clean up our act or drown in our own waste. Hi, my name is Grace Parker, and this year I studied the negative view of those with intellectual disability. Intellectual disability is a disability based on many limitations in functioning and adaptive behavior. The most important thing I learned this year is that these negative views come from a distorted view of what makes someone human and the things that we value most as a society today. I highly encourage others to be patient with those with disabilities and to continue to show them their true worth as God's children. Hello, my name is Bryce Patterson and for my senior practicum I studied the overprescription of painkillers. While researching this issue, I discovered that it largely stems from the greed of doctors and drug companies trying to hook their patients onto painkillers so that they get addicted and keep coming back for more. After speaking with a local police department and attending Narcotics Anonymous meetings, I've learned that the best way to combat painkiller overprescription is through spreading awareness. Many young adults do not know how dangerous these drugs are, and keeping them informed will keep them safe. Hi, my name is Katie Purdy, and for my practicum this year, I've concentrated on the problem of anti-intellectualism within Christianity. Simply put, this is an issue of Christians refusing, not knowing how to effectively seek God with their mind, failing to carry out the commandment in Mark 12:30, to seek and love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The most important thing that I've learned about this issue is that we are truly called to investigate and explore the world our God has given to us, and that in failing to use our God-given intellect, we are not truly living our lives to the fullest. In order to understand God and the world around us, we must put away the many distractions and be committed to living an examined life. My name is Jeremy Kerr. The problem that I identify with is people's lack of understanding of cybersecurity and new technologies such as electronic devices that are affecting their lives. The most important thing I have learned so far is that many people could understand the content and were able to gain more knowledge after I told them. So, so that means the reason they didn't understand this was because they didn't receive the kind of education as they need before. I hope that everyone can get their education done and be able to enjoy the new technology of our society. Hi, my name is Kenzie Rogers. For my senior practicum, I decided to study how society creates unreasonable standards for teenage girls in social media. The most important thing I learned is the importance of not comparing yourself to the societal roles in being pretty or beautiful on social media. Most teenage girls spend so much time on social media that they will eventually begin to want to change the way they look. In order for us to help this problem, we need to start by spending less time on social media. And then we need to help people realize that they are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Maybe give them a compliment on their inner beauty instead of their outward appearance. My name is Delaney Rupp. The problem I chose is that children with ADHD struggle with relational challenges which makes them unable to make relational connections that are fundamental to their growth and development as human beings. The most important thing I learned is that my experiences with ADHD can help someone else with their struggles. In response to my problem, I want other people to seek more information about ADHD and how it impacts a child's life and the life of those around them. Hi guys, my name is Jenna Ryan and for my senior practicum I chose to focus on Alzheimer's disease and its effects on the family unit. What I've learned throughout my research this year is the importance of communication between family members and other remedies for families struggling with the disease such as support groups. Therefore, in response to the problem, I would like people to educate themselves on Alzheimer's and how it affects families. Hi, my name is Becca Short and the problem I identified was the mental, emotional, and physical effects of divorce on children. The most important thing I've learned through this process was that while going into it, I could only see the issue from one side, the side of a child who had been developmentally hindered by their parents' divorce. This created a biased view of my research, incorrectly viewing parents as selfish, only making decisions rashly and inconsiderately. 
But through this process, for the first time, I had the opportunity to encounter parents fresh out of divorce, struggling, emotionally unstable themselves, and it opened my eyes to see that this problem isn't necessarily that parents don't care, but more so that during this traumatic time, it was difficult for them to find outlets of information to readily equip themselves with learning how to best deal with the situation for their child in the midst of all their own problems. While contrary to my first claim at the beginning of this year, I realized that the root cause of the mental, emotional, and physical effects that children face due to divorce isn't the selfishness of parents, but rather the trauma that parents face, hindering them from effectively finding treatment for their child and supporting their needs. My name is Sydney Van Ubel, and the problem that I identified is the stigmatization of children with incarcerated parents. While researching, I learned that the labels society places on these children often feel like convictions within themselves. In fact, stigmas among children and incarcerated parents often lead to disadvantages or lack of opportunities, all because of the feelings of ostracization, conformity to societal expectations, and the dissociation from parents that they face. These factors often develop as a result of assumptions and expectations society has of them. It's common for authorities, teachers, friends, friends, parents, and the like to assume that the children of incarcerated parents will follow in their parents' footsteps. For example, while researching, I came across a story of a young girl whose father had recently been arrested and, as a result, her best friend's mother did not allow them to hang out anymore because she believed her family would be a bad influence on her. Situations similar to this one are very common for these children. However, what I've learned is that it's important that society chooses to accept, understand, and walk alongside children with incarcerated parents. If you know someone who is a child of incarcerated parents, please look beyond the actions of the parents and instead seek to understand them individually and show them love and acceptance. If you are a child of incarcerated parents, I want you to know that you're loved and chosen by God. You have a Father in Heaven who knows you and loves you and wants you to be close to Him. Hello, my name is Keanu West and the problem that I have been studying is sex trafficking. What I learned about my topic is that sex trafficking is a global issue that can happen anytime or anywhere. I've learned that girls from the age of 1 to 18 are susceptible to being sex trafficked. I also learned that sex trafficking generates about $150 billion and out of that, $99 billion comes from sexual exploitation. What I want people to know is that boys can also be sex trafficked, not just girls. Sex trafficking can happen at broad daylight or at night. Sex trafficking can happen at a mall, a parking lot, a party, or a game. There are defense items such as pepper sprays or tasers to defend yourself. Never go out by yourself. Always travel in pairs or groups because sex trafficking can happen where you least expect it. Hi, my name is Daisha Young and the topic I decided to do research on was about the feeling of loneliness within the elderly in nursing homes. In doing research on this topic, I learned that loneliness can have negative effects on the person. It can show physical, mental, or emotional damage to the person. After doing research on this topic, I would recommend that others go and visit their elderly family members more often, whether in a nursing home or not. Hi, my name is Gabriella MacArthur, and this year for my practicum project, I decided to research the negative effects of perfectionism. The three main causes of perfectionism that I found are comparison, the fear of failure, and the creation of high expectations and people basing their self-worth off of the achievement of those expectations. So perfectionism is truly found the highest in teenagers and young adults. So something I advise everyone to do is stop comparing themselves to people on social media as all you're really seeing is a filter of that person's life, not the full picture. And for us to accept the person that God create, has created us to be. Hi, my name is Emily Powers, and this year I identified and studied the impact an athlete's distorted mindset has on one's performance and how it can lead to a negative mindset. Over the course of the year, I studied what a fixed versus a growth mindset looks like. Athletes with a growth mindset use their bad race or their bad game to make them stronger, not tear them down. So for all my athletes out there, stop comparing your weaknesses to your teammates' strengths and learn to perform with a growth mindset. Use the gifts that God has blessed you with to be the great athlete that you are. Hello, I'm Jeremiah Taylor. 
And my pride big and problem was the brokenness and relationships between college athletes and their sports programs. One thing that I learned over the course of my practicum journey is that college athletes cannot obtain jobs, nor can they accept scholarships or sponsorships from outside sources that aren't funded by the school through the NCAA guidelines. One thing that I want people to understand and take away from my practicum is that college athletes are more than just athletes. They're also students. We also have a full-time regular student schedule, as well as juggling a full-time athletic schedule. Hello, everybody. My name is Ayo Debo. And for my senior practicum project, I chose to study how brokenness and parent-child relationship can negatively affect a child's mental health and development. Through this process, I was able to identify the root cause of this issue as being parental dysfunction. Now there are many branches to parental dysfunction, but examples such as child abuse, divorce, and neglect are three things that could sever the relationship between a parent and their child. Above all these things, I believe that the most important thing that I learned through this practicum project was how much of an impact we as people can have when we work together towards addressing an issue in our community. If we push towards addressing these issues, we not only can have a long lasting impact on our community, but an impact on the world and all. My name is Gracie Anderson. This year for senior practicum, I studied the problem of anti-vaccination. People are choosing not to vaccinate their children and this can be dangerous to their children and those around them. Some people cannot be vaccinated due to immune disorders or other legitimate reasons. It's necessary to protect them with herd immunity, which is the immunity caused by a large amount of people using vaccines for a specific disease. Unfortunately, due to the lack of vaccinations, herd immunity is breaking down and leaving immunocompromised people and others more at risk of sickness. The most important thing we can do in response to this is to not only get our vaccinations, but look up information and fact check our information before jumping to conclusions. Hi, my name is Kennedy Halbert, and my practicum topic is the rising anxiety rates in teens. My research question was how the distortion of self-worth lead to that. I think the most important thing that I learned from this entire process would probably be that anxiety is one of the most common mental illnesses, also one of the most treatable, with the right help and resources. And I want people to know that just because a teen is having a problem with whether it's social media or body image issues, doesn't mean they're overreacting or being ridiculous. They might genuinely have a problem. Hello, my name is Maya Recovery, and the problem I studied was the distortion of race in the United States and how confusion and rifts in the Latin American community are results of it. I had so much amazing help from the researchers at the Pew Research Center to my own grandmother giving me amazing insight on this topic. I learned two very important things. I learned Latino is not a race, it is an ethnic background, and that the Latinx community is not a monolith. There are so many amazing races, religions, and other backgrounds that really encompass that one word. I wore my headpiece to show my pride as a proud Latina, and I really thought this project really opened my eyes to the amount of people who encompass that identity, and I'm very proud to say I'm one of them. Hi. My name is Connor Miller, and this year I have chosen to study whether our culture is failing to realize the importance and moral imperative of planetary colonization and space travel. The problem I have identified is our culture's failed realization of space travel and exploration. The most important takeaway from my project is that while exploration has its risk, space travel offers our species many technological advances and improvements in the quality of life for everyone on the planet, not just the small few who get to travel to space. Hey everyone, I'm Melissa Kahn, and this year for practicum, I researched the overprescription of birth control to teenagers. During my research, I discovered that many doctors do not actually inform their patients of the negative potential side effects the pill can have on their body. Many adult women and teenagers are not aware that there are natural alternatives to help with menstrual relief instead of being prescribed hormonal medication. So if you're considering birth control for menstrual relief, please know that there are more options. Hey guys, my name is Matt Arnold, and for my practicum project, I decided to study the problem of procrastination. But not just procrastination in general, I started to focus on the procrastination in high school students and how it affects them. Procrastination in high school students is a problem happening all around the world these days, but it can be stopped. It can only be stopped though if these high school students take action. There are tons of resources given to a high school when they enter high school, such as planners, guidance counselors, and procrastination can be done if these students manage their time well, make plans to get their jobs done, and finally, to rid themselves of the distractions of social media and electronics. 
My name is Dara Colbert and I decided that I wanted to do my practicum on alcoholism and how it affects a person's family. <laughs> alcoholism is a problem because not only does it affect the user, but it also affects the user's family as well. Over the past couple of months, I learned that the main cause of alcoholism as well as substance abuse is trauma. <clears throat> trauma, if not dealt with, can lead to many other things like stress and anxiety, depression, and all of those things that could potentially cause a person to become an alcoholic or a drug addict. The main thing that people should be mindful of when dealing with someone who is struggling with alcohol is that they don't you don't know where someone is coming from or what someone has dealt with so just be mindful of that whenever you encounter someone who's struggling with either alcoholism or substance abuse and i hope that this message brings awareness to you as well as many other people who might be struggling with alcoholism or substance abuse or any type of addiction in general. Hello, my name is Marcus Ryan Waddell, and the problem I chose to study is internalized racism and self-hate in the Black community. The most important thing that I've learned throughout this process is how much of an effect the media and pop culture has on internalized racism and self-hate, and something that I want other people to know is that if you're Black and you live in America, there's a very high chance that you have some form of internalized racism or self-hate, whether or not you're aware of it. Hello, my name is Bimi Ogunbade. My practicum is on race and its impact on mental health. I studied the origin of race and racial distinctions, and I found that race, it doesn't inherently affect our mental health, although it does play a large role in our mental development. The root cause that I found was that the failure to understand cultural and ethnic differences and the categorization of races leads to stigmas and a lack of mental health awareness and treatment. The most evident way that race impacts our mental health is through the stigmas that people carry. I found that the more stigmas a person carries in their interactions with mental health, the more that they negatively perceive mental health issues. Therefore, stigmas negatively affect of people's relationships and their ability to seek out mental health treatment. The best way to resolve this problem is to educate people on mental health issues and how they are treated. Hi, my name is Greg Pierce and the problem that I study is the clash between religion and American society. More specifically, why young Americans are leaving religion. From what I've learned, there has been a decline of a church attendance throughout maybe the past 30 or 40 plus years. And also, those who decide to leave religion have done so because of negative experiences that they've had either with their Christian peers or their church. What I want people to do is to spread light of this issue and to have a discussion on why this is a common occurrence and how people can use religion in a negative light. Hello, my name is Alex Sharkity. My topic this year was the lack of innovation in the traditional school system. But one thing that I took away most from this experience was going back to Chesapeake Montessori School. I went to Chesapeake Montessori School for half of my elementary school career and it has taught me so much throughout life. It has taught me how to learn and why I should be learning the way I can learn. It was so cool going back to the school and seeing all the kids learning how I did like six years ago. It was really fun going back and seeing all my teachers that I haven't seen in years and them remembering me, which was really cool. Hello, my name is Ben Thompson and I'm here to talk to you about my senior practicum. For my practicum, I chose to do a topic that is very present in our society today, and that is how technology and social media can lead to social isolation. When social media was first created, it was created with the intent to keep us more connected when we're not physically with each other. However, I found through my research that it can be very counterproductive to that goal one relied upon too heavily. It's a little bit ironic that this is the topic I'm doing now, considering we are quarantined and social distanced from each other, and our only form of communication is via technology. I want to stress that I don't think technology or social media are bad. They have done a lot of good in the world, but I do think when it is used to replace our physical relationships, it is a very ineffective way to build relationships. Something that I've learned through this topic is a way to assess my use of social media and technology, and that is by asking myself a question. And that question is, every time I reach for my phone, I ask myself, is this the right time? Is this the right place? And is this the right reason for wanting to pick up my phone? If it's, if it's not any of those, then I choose instead to set my phone down 
and to enjoy the present and the now. Just as God wanted us to live in the present and now, I choose to enjoy that because he has created that for us and that's where we should be. I encourage any of you listening to use the same tactic to ask yourself the same question when you are tempted to look at your phone out of boredom. Hello, my name is Whit Thompson, and for my senior practicum, I studied the relationship between science and Christianity. I learned that there are questions that science can answer and questions that it cannot answer. I learned that it is important to be weary of scientism, which is the belief that science is the source of all knowledge. This is both untrue and detrimental to the relationship between science and Christianity. I also learned that science and faith enhance one another, that science seeks to understand the objective reality described by the Bible, and that through science, Christians can better appreciate the beauty and complexity of our Creator. Hello, my name is Kalina Rumble. This year for practicum, I chose to research the problem of how luxury fashion brands encourage materialism in today's society. The most important thing I learned throughout this practicum research process is that there is no easy one-step solution to my problem. This problem relates to the human nature issues of greed and envy. There is no possible way that every person in the world will stop being greedy for themselves and envious of others' wealth. The only solution is to institute a change of heart within oneself. If you yourself choose to follow the right path and attempt to suppress the envious feelings, others will be encouraged to do the same. The solution to this problem is not quick and is a change of lifestyle in total. But the sooner we as a society begin to be more appreciative of our current blessings and less jealous of others, we can leave more room in our hearts to love one another. Hi, I'm Victoria D'Angelo, and this year I've been researching the negative emotional impact that divorce has on children. Throughout my research and interviews with licensed child psychologists, I have found that the negative emotions related to divorce are significantly influenced by the way their parents conduct themselves during their separation. Now, while divorce is a difficult time in children's lives, parents can take some steps to protect their children from unnecessary pain by keeping their relationship with their former spouse civil, communicating clearly with their child, and avoiding custody battles if possible. I hope that through my research, parents can more thoroughly understand that communication between them and their children is extremely important during a divorce in order to prevent their children from negative feelings of abandonment. It's also very important to note that children see, hear, and experience all of the confrontation between parents. So keeping parental interactions civil keeps the child from feeling like they are at fault or even the reason for divorce. Hello, my name is Nia Harley, and this year I did my practicum on juvenile delinquency. One thing I learned this year that I would like to share with others is that we are a product of our surroundings and we react to what's around us and who is around us. So oftentimes these kids are in difficult situations and they don't know how to, any positive way to react, so they react negatively. Hey guys, my name is Taylor Hefflin, and the topic I studied for my senior practicum was, how does the lack of stewardship of the body lead to people getting hurt while playing sports? The most important thing I've learned through this whole entire experience is that injuries are a very common occurrence. Even though it's an awful thing to happen to someone while playing sports, it does happen. And what I want people to do is to train their body to their fullest capabilities, if that's eating healthy, stretching, or doing everyday exercises. Because if you do this, your chances of getting hurt will dramatically de decrease. Hi, my name is Reagan Smith, and this year for my practicum, I decided to focus on colorism, which is the preference of lighter skin tones and European features on the African American community. The most important thing I've learned during this experience is how damaging history can be, how we carry it with us from generation to generation, and how it creates these damaging stereotypes that make their way into the larger community. Because colorism is nothing but a negative stereotype that has come from our racist past in this country. So as a result of this, I would like to ask you all to be more conscious on how you think about people and how you're treating them as a result. Maybe think about why you had these assumptions for people and start thinking about how you can break them down. Because if we can break down these colorist stereotypes, we can begin to break down colorism as a whole. Hello, my name is Hunter Steinow and for my senior practicum project, I chose the problem of homelessness and how our perspective of the homeless prevents us from creating healthy relationships with them. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned over the course of this year is that we can't actually help the homeless until we get those pre-existing beliefs about them out of our head. And I think once we do that, it becomes a lot easier for us to create community and make relationships with them. Um, and I think we can do this 
by doing things as simple as serving at a homeless shelter, donating food, water, clothes, um, or even just talking to a homeless individual wherever you, wherever you may see them. Hi, I'm Lindsay Anderson and I did my senior practicum on how reactive attachment disorder affects children who are adopted. Reactive attachment disorder is a disorder that occurs when an infant or child is unable to form attachments to parents or caregivers. This is a problem because it puts strain on both the children and the parents' mental and physical health. One thing I learned is to make new relationships while growing and maintaining the ones you still have, as well as approaching everyone with a caring heart and making sure to listen to them and letting them know you care. Hi, my name is Erica Hartman and my topic is on how has a distortion of human dignity caused us to view the deaf community as less than the hearing community. One thing I learned this year was overall, this project really opened my eyes to how broken our society is and how it needs a lot of change. The hearing community receives incorrect guidance and information about the deaf community, and because of that, the hearing people don't interact or try to communicate with them. In the end, I know God doesn't give us what we can't handle. God helps us handle what we are given, and God created each one of us to be different but special in our own ways. I'm Otto Pfefferkorn, and I decided to do my practicum project on plastic pollution and its effects on the environment. The most important thing that I learned during the research process is that plastic pollution is a more global and nuanced issue than I originally imagined. The United States does not contribute a majority of plastic dumped into the ocean. Rather, it is poorer countries like China and India that contribute to this majority. While I originally imagined the problem was caused by recklessness and laziness in the first world, I actually discovered that it is a more convoluted situation over in the second and third world countries. Hi, my name is Skylar Emmer, and this year I researched the problem of over-specialization in youth sports. I would say the most important thing I learned is the significance of giving young athletes a proper sampling period where they can try out and experience multiple different sports and take ownership of their athletic career. Nearing the end of my research, I would just like to say that I want parents athletes and coaches to all realize the importance of intentionally creating a balanced sports environment with both hard working and learning, but also fun. It is so important to instill hard working ethics, but at the same time, cultivate athletes passion for their sport, keeping them to continue to want to come to practice and love the sport they play at whatever level they desire to. Hi, my name is Caroline Lipsy. The problem I decided to research this year for my senior practicum was the absence of fathers and how it affects the lives of their children. The most important thing I learned about my topic is that children need not just one, but both parents and their lives in order to have a stable and healthy life. What I want others to know is that before a father decides to leave their family for whatever reason it is, he should be aware of the negative impact it could have on the rest of that child's life. Hi, my name is Casey Mackerel. And my topic is on how the government spends money on things nobody needs and how they are able to get away with it. A large factor in this and what I want people to know is the lack of political participation and the lack of political knowledge. If no one knows what's going into the bills that the government puts out, no one can stand up to things that are put in that have nothing to do with that bill. Such as a COVID bill, there are tons of things budgeted to different subjects such as the army and navy and all of that that have nothing to do with that actual bill so without knowing no one can stand up against the government and they can get away with anything they want hello my name is madison cote and this year i did my practicum presentation on the misunderstanding of stress and its relationship with mindset um, i learned about the differences between a growth and a fixed mindset and the importance of having a growth mindset to conquer stress effectively um, something I learned through my presentation is that a lot of our views about stress and mindset are often subconscious. So I'd really encourage people to take some time and evaluate their type of mindset and its relationship with stress uh, in order to handle stress in the best way possible. Hi, my name is Grace Hall and for my senior practicum, I researched eating disorders in teenagers. Eating disorders are often overlooked by today's society but I learned how dangerous they can be resulting in many health issues. One of the main causes is negative body image due to comparison, insecurity, and finding self-worth in appearance. I would advise other people to help by encouraging those with an eating disorder and supporting body positivity. Hi, 
My name is Caleb Haynes. The problem I focused on for my practicum is depression. The most important thing I have learned and want others to know is that depression is not just a feeling, but it is a disease. Someone with depression has an altered perception of reality. Depression isn't always noticeable. Your family and friends could be experiencing it without you ever knowing. It is important to educate yourself on what depression really is and to check up on your family and friends often. If they are depressed, encourage them to seek help from a professional. My name is Bree Mori and I chose to focus my senior practicum on leadership. I wanted to figure out the specific qualities that made a leader good. The quality that I found and wanted to focus on was vulnerability. Vulnerability is the ability to let down your guard and admit your mistakes. Many leaders are not vulnerable because of something called shame. Shame is the inherent belief that you are not good enough. You let your mistakes and the things you do wrongly identify who you are. This causes many problems in people's lives. Some people turn to alcohol and drugs to cover their shame, and other people become perfectionists with anxiety issues. Even Adam and Eve in the garden when they first sinned wanted to cover themselves. Shame is a powerful force, but God is even more powerful. God has told us who we are. He has told us that we are made in His image and that we are beautiful in His eyes. We need to remember that. We need to identify ourselves in God and not what we do or the mistakes that we make. Once we start to do this and start to define ourselves by how God defines us, we are able to be vulnerable. And when our leaders are vulnerable, they are able to admit to their mistakes, they're able to accept criticism, and they won't lash out or be angry. That is why vulnerability is such an important leadership quality to have. Hello, my name is Luke Eberly, and for my senior practicum, I researched the topic of moral formation in young people today. Overwhelming data shows that individuals are not being taught and therefore do not hold deeply felt moral convictions or beliefs nor do they see themselves as needing to form their emotions and desires in light of those moral values. I learned that our generation struggles to answer basic foundational moral questions, and one of the ways to fix this is for adults to participate in institutions that require their members to form virtues. One example of this, and the solution that I think best fits, are coaches and sports. Coaches have a tremendous opportunity to use sports to instill moral virtues on young men and women. I'm Mason Forlidge, and the project I chose for senior practicum this year was PTSD, especially relating to combat veterans. The most important thing that I learned in my research this year was that the more stuffed down and pent up emotions veterans had, the worsened symptoms of PTSD they had. I found that veterans who shared more of their emotions also had less severe symptoms of PTSD, including anxiety, depression, and exhaustion. Hi, my name is James Sweeney. I'm a senior. The problem that I decided to study this year was the racial tensions between the black community and police force. Um, the most important thing I think I learned is that uh, nothing is going to heal the next day, nothing's going to heal in the next year, maybe not even the next decade. Um, you know, these accidents that have happened are going to take time to heal and um, we're going to require patience. Hi, my name is Libby Lenhart and for my senior practicum I chose to research American sedentary lifestyle and how it leads to debilitating disease in millions of Americans every year. The average American sits for nearly 77 hours a week and at the root of this problem are the habits created by the American lifestyle. American jobs and academic systems encourage a primarily sedentary lifestyle leaving 86% of Americans sitting for the majority of the day, resulting in debilitating disease. Just sitting down to listen to this is increasing your chance of obtaining some type of CBD in your lifetime. The American lifestyle is failing Americans' health, and yet all we choose to do about it is sit some more. If I could give you one piece of advice as to how to not fall into this trap of sedentary living, it would simply be to create daily exercise habits for yourself and be intentional and persistent in following those habits. By doing so, you will not only think yourself 20 or 30 years down the road, but you will feel and see amazing small improvements in your attitude, energy level, and overall health.